Let me move on to another topic here, something that interests me. <clears throat> well, it should interest anybody who's Catholic. Uh, I've got an article here from LifeSide. It says, priest, and they're talking about Father Malachi Martin, who read Third Secret of Fatima, says that Satan was enthroned at the Vatican in the early 1960s. So here's what I know, Kyle, and I want to get your take. Here's a, my my research into this and, and, and reading this. Uh, I have read from good Catholic sources <clears throat> that uh, there are reports that Cardinal Bernardine of Chicago uh, was a Satanist and a pedophile. There's a, it's very well documented. Church Militant has some very good articles on this. So does uh, uh, TLDM.org. Uh, uh, they also have some very good articles on this. And we know that, that the Bishop Bernardine from Chicago said a Satanic Mass, and this is all documented. I have the links to all this, where he, uh, where he raped an 11-year-old child in the fall of 1957 in Greenville, in Greenville, South Carolina. Father Joseph Bernardine raped 11-year-old Agnes as part of a Satanic ritual that involved, among others, Bishop John Russell of Charleston. <clears throat> an in-depth church militant investigation turned up a career-long track record of accusations against former Chicago Cardinal Joseph Bernardine that not only was he a homo predator his entire career, but at, that, at, various, at, at various stops in his career, many of those sexual assaults were tied to satanic rituals. <clears throat> As documents began to resurface uh, from deep within the archdiocese's secret files, it appears that Cardinal Bernardine was not just a homo predator throughout his career, but also involved in satanic practices, all of which the archdiocese covered up, as well as today's archbishop, Cardinal Blaise Supich, covers it up. Bernardine's entire public career was one of was one of warm relationships with promoters of homosexuality. In fact, beyond his career and even and even his life, he explicitly requested the Chicago Gay Men's Chorus to sing at his wake. So this is all, uh, I, I've got links to everything that I just said right here. Uh, have you heard about that occurring in 1957 in South Carolina, uh, Greenville, Kyle? It's factual. Um, and yes, I've not only heard about it, but I'm a pretty skeptical kind of a guy, but I also can recognize patterns the last of those victims are dying. Um, we have dealt with cases of satanic ritualistic abuse victims in their 60s, 70s, and one that was just into their 80s. But the Bernadine victims are dying, um, thanks be to God and, and, a, and a mercy. But many of these people were possessed and uh, through conscription because of Bernadine activities and activities that he and others now understand he is not, I wish I could tell you that he is an anomaly and he is a great deviation, but he is not. There were many Chicago was, was very, um, there was a lot of these cases out of Chicago and there were satanic ritualistic abuse cases scattered all over. Um, they follow certain prelates as they as they go across the country because they endorse and or participate in this. Understand something that uh, pedophilia is um, is a name that doesn't is a designation that doesn't even begin to touch the evil that we're talking about. It is simply the only term that we can get our heads wrapped around um, quasi psychological psych. Uh, term that we can that we can use but please understand something bernadine understood as did theodore mccarrick as did others that um a priest once his hands are are anointed he's ordained everything he does has a ritualistic significance and the way that one grows in stature and an in influence on the evil side is through Depravity, the greater depths of depravity, desecration of a child, the the rape of a virgin child on an altar. This these things 
those depravities, Satanism is Catholicism turned inside out. And when a Catholic priest does it, this is of the ultimate magnitude. And when a cardinal does it, it is even greater, the power that they wield. At any given time, there is a cadre of cardinals that are involved in active malefice, offering uh, satanic rite and ritual. It's just, it's the way it is. I can't, I can't tell you that it's not that way. Um, because it comes to us from the possessed. It comes to us from those who have been abused. There's no way these people scattered across the country or around the world could coordinate the stories that they're telling us. And it always, they're always naming the same individuals or describing them. Many times they don't even know who they are. Um, but the demon apes the church, all of her structures, all of her sacraments, all of her rites, all of her rituals. This is exactly what we were talking about with we don't have the stomach to deal with Satanism the way it should be. The Saracens, the death to all of God's, those who, who serve God, because what would that look like in the church modernly today? It would be the immediate expulsion of all homosexual priests. It would be the immediate expulsion of anyone who was ever endorsed or backed by Theodore McCarrick. It would be the immediate expulsion of anyone who was endorsed or backed by Bernadine or who defends him. It would be the immediate expulsion of any priest, bishop, or cardinal actively promoting homosexuality or anything against the faith. That's what that looks like, and we don't have the stomach for it. I think back in the 60s, we were warned many, many years ago by uh, Malachi Martin, he was a former Jesuit who turned whistleblower, much like I would compare him, uh, much like a Father John Carapi, much like a Father James Altman. Uh, and Father Malachi Martin, he uh, he wrote a book, Windswept House, where he documents that a black mass was held at St. Paul, Paul's Chapel within the Vatican walls on January 29th, 1963. Father Martin's on record as saying uh, it was uh, that it was a black mass or the traditional Latin mass in reverse, complete with an animal sacrifice. They drugged a young girl who may or may not have been the victim of ceremonial sexual rituals. The ceremony was not the Novus Ordo mass because in Father Martin's words, even the Satanists know that this mass is not valid. I'm just I'm just reading the article here. It's from bishopaccountability.org. Uh, Father Martin writes that the Black Mass was attended by high-ranking prelates in the church, important laymen, business leaders, and politicians. At least one cardinal was in attendance. A concurrent enthronement of Satan was held also in South Carolina on that date. Kyle, do you know about this dual satanic mass, one being done in, inside the Vatican walls and one being done at South Carolina pretty much on the same date? Um, yes. Um, here's what I know about it. It, it has been con confirmed or I've heard it confirmed from, uh, several exorcists, some of whom are no, uh, who are deceased, aged out, but they were hearing these things in, uh, solemn sessions, um, demon bragging. There was one such case in a rural part of America with an illiterate, uh, victim, who had been a victim of satanic ritualistic abuse at the hands of a priest um, in the United States. And so what was happening in the Vatican uh, was also happening at the same time in several dioceses and several locations. Um, and so that's the way uh, that, that Satan apes um, these things. And so, these people, these victims would have this information and they would, the demon would say these things to the exorcist during solemn session. And the exorcist, of course, had no idea what was going on in Rome. They're not up on all of uh, Rome politics or any of those other things. But when they began to compare notes and begin to, to talk to each other, there was a common narrative. There was a, it, it's as if these people were relating uh, a common experience because the demons present to them, some of them had been present there. Some of them had um, been summoned and empowered because of the incantations and things that were done 
by these prelates. And so, you know, we're, we're at a stage, <clears throat> we're at a stage, Jesse, where um, the Satanists, the Freemasons and others for years used the term conspiracy theory and they, um, they dismissed us. Right. And I used to tell people I'm no, uh, I'm no theorist, uh, but I can recognize conspiracy. <laughs> and at this point, really and truly, <laughs> they have no credibility left. Um, you, and at this point, they, they simply have no credibility left. And just because of past history, now the most outrageous theory or premise must be given must be given some consideration just based upon the the track record of the opposition. Yeah, it's like you're always saying that the demons push human behavior to absurdity, and this is exactly what we're seeing here. And I'll, and I'll tell you why I believe, aside from what you just told me, which obviously uh, you're a very credible source in, in the area of spiritual warfare because of all your connections, but just for me, looking looking as a juror or even looking as a cop with the eyes of a cop, I'd say, okay, so this happened in 1963. All right, uh, let's let's take a look at uh, at what's happened shortly thereafter. Well, uh, in 1972, a pope said, Pope Paul VI, he says the smoke of Satan has entered the church. All right, the smoke. Of, well, when did it enter the church? Could it have been in 1963? Then a few years after that, in 1976, another future pope, Carol, Cardinal Wojtyla. Uh, uh, two years before he became Pope, he also said something similar. We are now facing the final confrontation between the church and the anti-church, the gospel and versus the anti-gospel. Uh, <clears throat> this confrontation lies within the plans of divine providence. So he says much the same thing. Then another year after that, 1977, Pope Paul VI, again, he says, uh, let us call him by his name, the devil, it is as if from some mysterious crack, uh, the smoke of Satan has entered the temple of God. The, ta the tale of the devil is functioning in the disintegration of the Catholic world. The darkness of Satan has entered and spread throughout the Catholic church, even to its summit. So you have three popes right after this 1963 event that Malachi Martin talks about. You got three popes that are telling us that Satan is infiltrated and Satan's come into the church. And uh, Father Malachi Martin, a little bit before he died in 1990, there's a radio interview of Father Malachi Martin on Triumph Communications where he says, quote, again, he never, he never reneged from what he said in 63. This is 30 years later. He's saying the same thing. He says in a radio interview, quote, there was this consecration, this enthronement of Satan within the Vatican of Lucifer, by the way. It's a historical fact. It was done one particular day by a certain group of people representing Luciferians all over the world, especially American Luciferians. It was done, therefore, in a certain sense, Lucifer has power. He doesn't own it yet, but I'm sure he hopes to own some Pope as his man, close quote. So uh, there you have it, Kyle. You have right after this 1963 satanic ritual that occurred you know, in two places in the Vatican and here in the U.S., uh, you got three popes right after that, a few years after that, telling us, warning us that Satan has entered into the church, which to me gives credibility to what Mal Malachi Martin says. Does that make sense? It absolutely does make sense. And, you know, you, you can't make stuff up. You, you, I mean, you the real... Uh, it far outstrips anything that anybody makes up in, in fiction, but he's exactly right. Um, the, the church in the United States was compromised from the time of, of the inception of the United States, but we've had times when there were uh, heretical popes. We've had times when they were, we've had all kinds of popes that um, were not good for the church this may be the first time that we've got a satanic cabal in control uh, in the Vatican, um, certainly in control, the Galian mafia, all of these things that we're looking at. Just simple math will tell you, you know, Jesus Christ himself handpicked 12 apostles. One of them was hitting for the other side. One of them was, a, was an agent, uh, a agent provocateur, was working for the other side. 
So that's one in 12. If you take that same math over today, then um, you've got at least one in, uh, you know, one in 12 equates to between 10 and 16 cardinals that are hitting for the other side. Um, it's come out in solemn sessions. Uh, multi- Again, this is the main source of our information is to triangulate and see where stories are replicated, to see where things are replicated, to see um, under holy obedience and under holy threat of holy scourges. The diabolical does tell the truth when they're pressed and when they have to. Um, and so these stories have some credibility. They also know things that um, that's part of the idea of occult knowledge or understanding of occult knowledge is they know things that, that they couldn't possibly know. Um, and these accounts get corroborated. And so there has to be a certain amount of credibility. And so when you see these things over and over again, currently there are at least at any given time and has been since the 1960s, nine active cardinals involved in Malapus um, being offered within the Vatican, within Vatican City. And that's been ongoing since the 63 consecration to that altar. Um, that That's just, we see that as being very credible um, because of the multiple ways, vectors, and sources that it's come from. And it seems to bear out. You also look at the efficacy. You can listen to some of Father's talks. The efficacy and and rapidity with which exorcism was done at different times in the church, and then expulsion slows way down. Um, uh, liberation slow way way down because the power uh, of the prayer, the power of the church, um, is diminished uh, based upon what the patriarchy, what the hierarchy is involved in and what they're doing to not only diminish the power um, on the good side, but to increase the satanic influence. And so the church is now influencing more through satanic influence than it is through Christocentric influence, I would dare to say. When we're seeing the uh, aberration of social justice, we're seeing the uh, misapplication of um, an elevation of climate and earth to idol status, we're seeing the USCCB, all of our bishops being drawn away from their homes, out of their diocese to participate in political matters, um, to look at things that are tenets of the truth, uh, tenets of the faith, to begin to assail and modify those things. And so the idea that Satan, the smoke of Satan has entered, I think we got the whole dragon in the house. <laughs> Kyla, Father Gabriel Amorth, in, in 2010, I mean, he passed away in 2016. He actually said, quote, uh, the devil is lurking in the very heart of the Roman Catholic Church. The devil is resides in the Vatican, and you can see the consequences. That was Father Gabriel Amorth. He said that about six years before he passed away. Uh, of course, some people are saying, oh, no, no, that was a, a you know, a, a irresponsible statement by Father Amorth irresponsible are you kidding me i think he was uh he was uh just sounding the alarm he was being a john the baptist kyle thanks a lot well, brother father, go ahead i just wanted to make one comment father amor father bamonte many of the others who practice uh, exorcism in and around rome their information is coming the same place as it's coming from us is you got a 14 year old girl who is possessed or an 11 year old boy who is an altar server who is possessed And in solemn session, the demon is naming the priest, naming the cardinal and others that are engaged in the black mass that conscripted or inserted that demon into the body of that child. That's what those guys are hearing. That's what we're hearing. Thanks a lot, brother. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Wednesday War College. Up next, Gary Machu, hands on apologetics. Pray a rosary every day. Stay close to Jesus. Live in a state of grace. Read your Bible every day. And remember, become holy or die trying. God bless you. Keep the faith. See you next time.